And let's backtrack to Ekrutik, where the legendary Ho-Oh awaits us. What kind of a name is that? No more annoying Ho-Oh worshipper sages now that the Rainbow Wing is in your possession. Oh, and in, in Silver, of course, it's reversed. You get the Silver Wing before the Rainbow one for obvious Lugia reasons, which means you also get to the Whirl Islands before. Anyway, it's time for another puzzle. The tower itself is riddled with jumping boards, much like the ice that if you make a mistake, you have to go all over again. Arrgh! At least it's not too challenging. As you eagerly await the encounter with the legendary Ho-Oh on the top, and once there, it's time for a legendary encounter! The tower looks tiny from the outside, but it's really huge when you're on it. Anyway, enough loafing around, time for the fight! And time to catch it! Saving is what everyone will be doing, but I think it's cooler if it's a more natural, risky chance. Finally meet. You're mine. Go, Cedra. Fight. Bubble. Twister. See how good you are now, huh? Yeah, come on, come on. I can, I can take you. Yeah, right. Sure, it's flinched. Yeah. Okay, time to get my master balls because I'm totally not a cheater. What? What? No! I. I'm such a moron! That was a waste. If you don't capture it, ho -Oh is gone forever. And there is nothing you can do to get it back. Well, at least, not officially. Anyway, there's nothing else to do now than to face the new Elite Four. The Pokémon League! Just like in Red and Blue, backtracking to New Bark Town where you started is where you continue to reach everyone's favorite boss fight. The Pokemon League at, where else but the Indigo Plateau! The exact same area where you massacred the Elite Four two years prior in the Color Games. Using the new HM called Waterfall, you get through the Tojo Falls, a connecting cave between Johto and Kanto. Heroic music plays as the chubby guy heroically tells you that you've made it to the heroic region of Kanto! He's the best character in the game because he knows Kanto is superior. When I played this for the first time and the man said that to me, I was like this. A wave of old memories flourish as the steady uphill journey commences where a bunch of pretty tough cool trainers challenge you. As we get further up into the nostalgic lands of Kanto, the feeling is exuberant and pretty exciting. When finally, we're back at Victory Road. Not as many trainers as to fight as before, but a good opportunity to capture some strong Pokémon. And then, the red-headed rival kid challenges you once more! Ah! Seriously, he's stalking you. Report him to the authorities! And finally defeated, the red-headed kid succumbs to his conscience. A change of heart. Uh, kind of. Then, it's the Elite Four. The same group that was fought in the color games only because it's been two years. A shift within the members occurred, of course. Be sure to pack in as many useful items as possible, because this is going to be the long haul of Pokémon Battle. And look here! The old man who can teleport you back home because you might just not be ready. I have no idea why this guy is even here. He's just being a nuisance, really. Go away, jerk. Anyway, time to meet and defeat the Elite. Instead of a mysterious voice telling you not to leave, like in the first one, it's a giant thick wall that falls down, blocking the way. And the first member to beat is... a, a joke. No, seriously, look at him. A tie? A mask? Uh, what? <laughs> That's just the stupidest, least intimidating moron I've ever seen, and he's supposed to be part of the Pokémon League? <laughs> Will, okay, it's, it's Will. A psychic master, I guess. He has Xatus and stuff like that, whatever. Second up is, what's this? Green grass and, wait, I know that laugh. 
It can't be. Cypher Sorize, it's, it's Koga! The old gym leader from Fugis of City in the color games. The Deadly Poison Ninja Master has elevated to Pokemon League status, and unlike Will, packs a punch and looks like he means business while doing it. After defeating Koga, the only remaining elite from the previous Elite Four, from the other color games, is Bruno. And he's back with less strong but equally intimidating fighting and ground types. Last of the Elite Four is a new character called Karen. She specializes in dark types and thinks they're the coolest and meanest ever, which is why it's even more fun to see her defeated. Watch out for that Hound Doom, who keeps crunching your Pokemon. Fighting is me enough, but crunching? That's so cool. And, after being defeated, Karen makes one of the most important statements, at least in my opinion, in the entire game series. Differentiating what today's players have been accustomed to doing, and what Pokemon was mostly about. Ah, that was very wise of you, Karen. Thank you. And then, the champion is, of course, that crazy cape-wearing, red-haired nut, Lance, the Dragon Master. Unlike Will, who is snooty and takes himself too seriously, Lance, despite wearing a Dracula cape, respects you. Comes from the first game, and you have the final fight. Again, Ben's dragon types are tricky and tough. But one ice Pokemon on your team and all his Pokemon fall down like bowling pins. And the Elite Four has been conquered. And the game's primary story has ended. Just like the old games, Professor Oak comes in and gives us a pep talk. And look, the radio tower's Mary is here to give us an interview. Which is sadly rejected by Lance. And no matter how many times you beat the Elite Four, she never gets to do that interview. <laughs> and also because the game couldn't handle that much of the feature. But it would be back in later installments. As usual, the heroic montage is played as the Pokémon used to wipe the floor clean with the Elite Four is immortalized at the Pokémon Hall of Fame. And making us, you, the new Pokémon League Champion! We are treated with celebratory credits with quite cute music that just gets you inside. Listen to that. And as usual, after the credits, we're back in the place we started, New Bark Town. Although this time, Professor Elm curiously calls you to see him, and gives you an SS ticket. What? Just like the old games! Only this time, it works? Yes, indeed! For anyone who was oblivious to the fact that before playing Gold and Silver, myself included, you are free to go back to where the real trainers lived and the old games were played. In Kanto. Beating the Elite Four was only half of the game. A new journey has started. A time to head back to the true beginning. With Kanto! Land of Freedom! <laughs>